I'm Henry Claussen. I'm a professor of ophthalmology at University of California, Irvine. I have a background in neuroscience as well as ophthalmology, and I've been working in the field of neural transplantation pretty much all my career. And uh, more recently, that became stem cell research in particular. Then very quickly, I became interested in the retina as a nice model for studying neural degenerations and medically as a potential site for intervention because of its accessibility, as well as its relative simplicity when you compare the retina to the brain and other parts of the central nervous system. So when I was looking at the retina and thinking about what conditions might potentially be treatable from the standpoint of a theoretical regenerative medicine approach, I very quickly uh, identified retinitis pigmentosa as a preeminent retinal degeneration um, in which uh, the, the situation for the patients is quite severe. And so given that there was uh, indeed no treatment available to these patients and because the condition would inexorably continue to progress um, and potentially leading to complete blindness, the stakes were quite high and the medical mandate was there to, to find some kind of treatment. My early work as a PhD really kindled my interest in the area of neural regeneration and neural transplantation. And that propelled me into the field of ophthalmology. At that time, the technology did not yet exist for how we might treat retinitis pigmentosa or AMD or these other degenerative diseases. So um, fast forward into the present, um, the technology that became uh, quite compelling along the way was neural stem cell transplantation and in particular, retinal progenitor transplantation, which is something that I participated in developing along the way to, to fill the niche of something that would uh, provide a potential treatment strategy. So these cells, these retinal progenitor cells, could be used to treat RP, at least that's what I thought, and they might be of use in a number of different ways. For instance, you could transplant these cells with the goal of replacing cells like photoreceptors, rods and cones that are being lost in the course of the disease. The other possibility is you could use these cells to deliver trophic factors that would preserve the host photoreceptors and then treat the, the disease that way. But then from the standpoint of being pragmatic and trying to get some kind of help to people with RP as soon as possible, uh, I determined that the fastest possible way from the bench result to getting into people was to use these cells in the way of a neurotrophic factor delivery system. So basically the cells represent a small little biological factory that's pumping out these special proteins and the proteins are doing the work so Dr. Nesburn came to UCI before I did. And in fact, it was Dr. Nesburn who convinced me to come over. And his ability to get me over was immensely facilitated by the Discovery Eye Foundation. So the DEF was literally the catalyst to bring me from where I was to where I am now here at UCI and provided the startup funds in the entirety to allow me to hit the ground running and really get the results that in turn allowed me to get funding from the California Institute of Regenerative Medicine. And that in turn, uh, the success on the early tr translational um, allowed us to progress to clinical trials directly. Translational research differs from bench science because the goal isn't to you know, strictly provide data or new discoveries 
to in the literature to the scientific field. Uh, in fact, the goal is to deliver a new treatment or intervention or device um, to the therapeutic arena to help in the clinical management of the patient. In doing so, um, for this to be sustainable, it needs to be in the form of a, a structure that is financially sustainable, not on research grants. So basically, it involves the formation of a company. And the key to forming a company early on is to have intellectual property. And by that, we mean patents. So you need the patents to form the company to be doing translational research. Because you can call it translational, but if you're not laying down the intellectual property and protecting what you're doing, there's no basis for a company. If there's no company, there's no future in the product. Discovery was, again, absolutely critical to making this happen because research grants are restricted. They do not cover intellectual property. But intellectual property involves assistance from the legal side, and it's not exactly cheap. So you need funding for the intellectual property to make the whole thing happen. Because the Discovery Eye Foundation can, and in our case did, provide the funding that allowed us to get that intellectual property that served us very well in terms of forming a stable basis for the company that's evolved out of this and that is carrying forward this work into the phase three clinical trial uh, that will be starting very soon. So we are in a clinical phase project here, um, and that started, of course, with a phase one trial. That's strictly a safety trial, but we saw some interesting results, and we saw that the patients seemed to be seeing something, which was, again, <laughs> that's the result we were hoping for. Um, and so because the safety was good and we had some indications of benefit, um, we were able to move from that phase one uncontrolled trial to a phase two B trial that involved uh, masking the subjects to treatment group and it involved uh, a control group and so on. So it was a randomized controlled trial. Phase two trial, the safety was good and there was a very clear signal where people were seeing better and we saw a dose response effect where the higher dose gave more of an effect than the lower dose. We were happy with what we saw in the phase two trial and it gave us quite a bit of information that's helping us design the phase three trial. I think we're next in line and, and our treatment is for all comers within the setting of RP. So it's, it's technically the first treatment for RP if it's approved. Um, and you know we're moving towards that goal and we're ahead of uh, other projects. Um, there are other projects working on similar goals, um, but I don't think they're ready for phase three at this time. I consider this a treatment for RP. I wouldn't use the word cure myself um, because I think that sets the expectation that if if you get this treatment, you'll go back to normal. Um, we don't have that expectation in RP. Um, you have to realize how destructive RP is to the retina to really have a sense of how tall an order that is. But if you can keep people from going blind, then I think even if that's not a cure, it's a really good treatment. So um, keeping people from going blind is our goal.